In this demo, we will see how to consume REST services using Spring Boot. We will take the Spring MVC project we had created in our earlier module connecting to database and instead of fetching data from a database, we will display the front end consuming data from the REST APIs. We will make a copy of the app, remove the database linkages, modify the service layer to fetch the data and perform CRUD operations using the API calls versus fetching it from the database. Alright, let's get started. Now here is the Spring MVC project we had created in our earlier video connecting to database. Let me start it. It is running at port 8080. Let me go to the browser, go to URL HTTP localhost 8080 slash inventory slash all and we see the list of items. We can edit, add new item and delete item. Currently, this is happening against a backend MySQL database. Let's stop the app. There is an error for SSL exception, which I believe is a bug with the MySQL connector. Probably it will go away with the version of MySQL connector at the time you try this demo. But as a workaround, let us open the application.properties file and you can put the use SSL equal to false in the data source URL to avoid this error. Let me make a copy of this app, paste it, give it a name Spring Consume Rest. Let's open the app. Let me clear the console, close the application.properties file. Currently, the item service class is performing CRUD operations using the JPA repository interface. Let's delete the repository package and the class. Next, let's go to the application.properties file and remove all the database and connection pooling properties. Next, let's delete the import.sql file. Let us open the pom.xml file and remove the JPA and MySQL dependencies. So essentially, we have delinked this app from a backend database. Next, let's go to our model package, open the items entity, remove the add entity notation the add id notation, the generation notation. The only reason we have the entity here is as our REST APIs would be returning it and we can have Spring do the translation of the JSON to this entity for us. Add the add JSON ignore properties, ignore unknown equal to true, which states that ignore any properties not bound to this type. Open the main class. Over here, let us define a bean which will return a new REST template. Defining a bean like this will then help Spring register it and so we can auto-wire it in our service class. Let us open the application.properties file and change the server port to 8082 so that it does not conflict with our REST API app for which the Tomcat is also listening on port 8080. So let's open our service class and fix these errors. Let us auto-wire our REST template as variable RST. Fix the imports. Next, for the get method, let us get the item by calling rst.get for object, put in our URL http localhost 8080 slash API slash items plus item ID, where we are attaching the item ID as a path parameter. The response type is items.class. There are no URI variables. We print the item name and return the item. Let us remove the optional from the return signature. Next, Let's change the get all method to pull from the API. We will receive the response as response entity of type list of items. So this time we will call the rst.exchange method which will take in the API URL, the HTTP method which is get, the entity, headers and our body to write to the request, we are passing null for it and parameterized type reference is used to pass generic type information. So list of items in our case which will be returned back by the API. There are no URI variables. Let's fix the imports. We then obtain the list of items by calling response.getBody method. Let's print the items size and then return the items. The implementation for insert and update method is straightforward, where you call the rst.postForObject method, which takes in the API, the item to insert or update, and the type of the object here, items.class. There are no URI variables. For the delete method, let us call rst.delete 
passing in the delete API, passing in the request parameter of ID as item.getItemID. Going to the controller, let's fix the errors. Essentially, we are returning now item versus the optional items as before. So let's fix that. Similarly here, let's remove the i.get. Now our controller methods stay the same, call the service methods as before, just that this time the service methods are fetching data from the REST API calls. Let's go to the Spring Boot dashboard and first start our REST API app. It got started listening at port 8080. Next, let's start our consumer app which gets started at port 8082. Let us go to HTTP localhost 8082 slash inventory slash all and here we see our front end pulling in data from the REST APIs. Let's edit an item, add a new item, save it and it shows up here. Let's delete it and it's gone. So all the API calls are working just fine. With this, we have reached to an end of this module. Let's go and summarize what we talked about.